All right, well, good morning, everyone, to the June 10th Lemon Grove Clergy Association, what we call the clergy breakfast, without the breakfast, minus the breakfast, because we're on Zoom. But feel free to eat your breakfast if you like, or finish your coffee. Um, I'm recording for those who are unable to make it. A lot of good information, and we're so glad that you're here to um, share what's going on in your world and how we can support and help each other uh, through all kinds of craziness that is going on in our world today. And we want to respond um, positively in a way that will make our uh, community a much better place. So I'm going to ask my husband to open in prayer and, um, and just to let you know, um, after the prayer, um, we're going to have everybody share their name, so you have to unmute yourself, your organization, church, or agency, and then let us know if you have an announcement you'd like to make. I'm going to keep a list, and then we'll go back through all of them uh, once we've introduced everybody. So, um, Mark, do you want to go ahead and start sure. with prayer? Mm -hmm. The great God, <clears throat> we come humbly, thankfully, gratefully. Uh, but also anxiously, we, we know that giving ourselves to you and calling upon you is, is the best thing to do. It's the first thing to do. But after that strength and encouragement that you give us, you um, send us to be your healing hands, your marching feet, your open eyes and kind hearts uh, to, a, to a world, our, specifically our world here in Lemon Grove to be a carrier of, of peace and of wisdom, of unity and equality. I pray that as we talk today and gather today, that the voices that are heard, the words that are spoken, the things we talk about, the actions we're going to take, the meetings we're going to have will first be to your honor and glory. And that can't help but make Lemon Grove and surrounding communities and families and residences and citizens um, better and, and safer. But we give you this time and uh, pray for protection and for grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, welcome to everybody who's just popping on. Um, we just had our opening prayer and we're so glad that you're here. Welcome, Harriel and Lydia and whoever's calling in on the phone. Um, we're going to go ahead and go and introduce ourselves so we kind of know who's here on this meeting. Um, and it's a little, um, on Zoom, everybody's boxes are in different orders on their screen. So we'll go from my screen and I'll try to identify who you are and have you unmute um, your microphone. Actually, you know what I could do? I could just unmute everybody. Well, let me try, we'll give it a shot. I'm gonna unmute everybody so it goes quicker and you don't have to find your mute, unmute button. Um, if there's a real, clear background noise, I can mute that. Oh, Nathan, good to see Nathan here. Okay. So not sure what, how we're getting feedback here. Okay. All right. So let me start with Dean on my screen. Dean is first. All right. I'm Dean Ambrosini. I'm with the Institute for Public Strategies. Um, I do have an announcement to make at this time. So. All right. Did you want me to make it now, or do you want to just keep track of it and we'll make it at the end? I will keep track and we'll come back at the end. Thank you, Dean. Great. Glad to be here. Not sure why we're getting that echo feedback. Okay, got his, it. Feed, okay. his computer is uh, feeding back into your yeah, microphone. Yeah, we so. thought they were all muted, but um, we found it, we figured out that our third computer that's running the slides was unmuted for some reason. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. All right, so Dean, we'll come back to you. Thank you for joining us. Glad to have you this morning. Okay, next on my screen is Zucconi. Good to see you in your red suspenders there, Bill. Oh, I know why, because I unmuted all. It unmuted. That makes sense. I've never done it before. Okay, so Bill just dropped off. Oh, there you are. Okay, so Bill, you want to share who you are and where who you represent? Okay, my name is Bill Zaccone, and I'm affiliated with Interface Shelter.
Ultra Network of San Diego. And I have just two brief things for a little bit later on in the meeting. Uh, but I do have to leave the meeting probably early today. I've got a contractor coming by the house and when the doorbell rings, I'm gonna have to leave. You've gotta go. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to you first then, Bill. I got you at the top of the list then. All right, thank you very much. Awesome, welcome, glad to have you. All right, next I have Mike. Or area teaching calm is what your video says. So sorry about that. I'll, I'll change my name on there. It's, it's, uh, it's Mike Lavish with the Baha'i Faith, and we do have an announcement for later. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right, next I have Jennifer. Hi, um, Jennifer Mendoza. Uh, with St. John of the Cross Church, and Lem I'm on the Lemon Grove City Council, and I, I don't necessarily have an announcement. Um, I did, uh, I, but I will, I, the, the phone call that I got was from my granddaughter, so I might have to duck off to go deal with her issue, um, which is, she just wants to see me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Everyone yeah. should have that issue, right? It's a good issue. It's a good issue. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, Thanks. Jennifer. Okay, David. David Shorey, Institute for Public Strategies, uh, East County Program Manager. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have an announcement or is Dean going to make it for you? Dean's going to make it for me. Got it. Thanks, David. All right, Monique. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm Monique Myers. I'm a Community Partnership Prosecutor at the District Attorney's Office. I presented to you guys about a year and a half ago, but this is my first meeting as just an attendee. So thanks for having me. Great to have you. Do you have anything that you want to share with us later? Should I put, add you to the announcement list or? I have a lot of things to share since I haven't been here for a year, but I thought maybe I could just email it to you and you can pass okay. it on. Okay, and if you decide at the end, we'll definitely have open mic time where people can just add stuff in as it comes to them. So welcome, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Harriel. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, yes, uh, Harry L. Corsair, uh, House Gone Wild International and uh, Thrive Lemon Grove. And uh, just uh, looking forward to reconnecting with everybody. Nothing to share at the moment, but uh, you know, still working. My wife and I, Lisa, we're building our business uh, at home while we're uh, on lockdown. And uh, also working virtually with some of the great people here in, with the Lemon Grove Clergy Association. Awesome. Great. Welcome and tell your wife hello. Yes, will do. Nathan, glad to have you. First time at the clergy breakfast. Um, you want to unmute your mic and share who you are with everyone here? Yes, hi. Uh, thanks. Uh, so my name is Nathan Gallegos. I am the Director of Leadership Development at Sion, uh, Santa Luciana. We're a bilingual church right there off of um, Carlisle Drive. So we're right on the corner of Spring Valley and Lemon Grove and also work with the John Maxwell team as a coach, speaker, and trainer. And uh, my daytime job is why I'm usually not able to be at these, is uh, I'm a training administrator for a federal detention center downtown. So that's where I'm at right now. So, um, so yeah, I'm glad to, glad to be on with you guys. Wow, um, excellent, I'm glad to have you. And, and uh, that corner of Lemon Grove that we, we um, we're glad to have you representing. Uh, Roberta? Hi. I'm Roberta Bowling. I'm with the Baha'i Faith Community. I'm also with the Lemon Grove Historical Society. Um, and we, we have an event to uh, talk about later. Mike is gonna speak for us. Excellent. Thank you, Roberta. Welcome. Thank you. All right, next up I have Clarice. Oh, nice to see you, Clarice. Glad that you're on. You wanna yes. introduce yourself and, and, and who you represent? Uh, Clarice Christian, uh, Pastor Emmanuel Chapel Church in Spring Valley, California, and uh, member of a number of clergy associations, pastors on points, San Diego County Ministers Alliance, but also the owner of Sea Christ Bookstore, Christian Bookstore in Lemon Grove, uh, uh, on Palm Avenue. It doesn't face Palm, but it's in that shopping complex, and I just uh, have an announcement. Okay, great, Clarice. We will... Come back to you, glad to have you. Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sarah Lewis from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Awesome, welcome. Thank you. Been seeing Sarah over there at the food packing work parties on Fridays, that's great, her and her kids. Um, okay, Joyce, you're up, your, your camera's off, but 
I know you were here earlier. Are you still here? She might have stepped away. Um, okay, let me skip Joyce for just a minute. Joyce, if you can hear me, we just, uh, you can even just unmute your mic if you want to. I see Lydia's box. I know she's probably at work. I don't know. Lydia, are you in earshot? Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Lydia Romero. I'm the city manager for Lemon Grove. And, and when it's appropriate, I do have a few announcements I'd like to share. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And then there's one more person I see on here um, on a telephone. It's the 609-461-8363 number. Does anybody want to claim that? You want to <laughs> unmute your and share who you are? Susan Farnsworth. Susan. Hi, Susan. Of course. Great to have you. Lemon, Lemon Grove United Methodist Church. Very nice to have you. Thank you. All right, Joyce, are you with us? She must have stepped away for a minute. Okay. So um, Joyce, I know, is with Thrive Lemon Grove, and she's also um, with a pastor's wife of a church in Spring Valley. I forget the name. Does anybody know? Harriel, do you know the name of her church? No, because they moved as well. So yeah, uh, okay. uh, voices of victory. Voices of victory. Thank you, Clarice. Thanks, Clarice. All right, so we'll. I'm sure she'll probably pop back on. So um, let me do this. Let me have Lydia share, and then Bill, because um, I know Lydia is at work and is a busy lady with trying to manage a city under lockdown. And so Lydia, why don't you go ahead and share, and then we'll go to Bill. And then I'll start calling out the rest of the announcements. Awesome, fantastic. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for allowing me to, to have a few minutes. Um, just a couple of things, we're still on lockdown. We're slowly, as the county, opening things up um, and opening businesses up um, as things are, are um, handed down from the state and from the county. So please continue to visit our, our COVID-19 webpage on our website for uh, new and exciting um, uh, announcements, as well as um, some how-to guides. We've sort of condensed some of the very complicated state and um, county guidelines into one sort of uh, easy to read guide. So it, we're trying to make it applicable per uh, agency. I know I, know I sent um, a Mark and Ann uh, the one we did for churches that said, you know, here's your guide to go ahead and open up. Um, we had to unfortunately cancel uh, concerts in the park um, this this summer, um, at least all the way through June and partially of July. I'm still hopeful that the governor will allow mass gatherings again um, with at least some face coverings and some other um, uh, distancings, especially if it's outside. But for right now, we still can't have um, group large groups in more than 12 people. Um, we are also we also had to cancel movies in the park, and I think I may have announced that already. So some similar activities are not going to be happening related to the COVID issue. Um, we are going to um, open day camp starting on Monday, but we're having a limited registration um, because of the new COVID regulations and how we have to make sure that the children are in groups together. We can't mix children. Um, we are sort of testing a small pilot with um, the first 60 registrants. Um, and they have to register for the entire week because we have to keep kids together. Um, there are some additional rules. We will be um, uh, checking kids' temperatures. We will be checking temperatures of our recreation staff that will be working um, in the day camps. And then we're also trying to retool it. So in the old format, we went on events with kids and we took them to the baseball games or to, the, um, to um, bowling. Well, those aren't really available to us this year. So we're, we're looking at retooling it and bringing in um, instructors to do specific things with kids. So um, if you have any suggestions, please send them my way with for large art projects or some type of events that will appeal to a multiple age group that we have in our camps. And then lastly, on some of the protests and unrest, just know that the as, as part of the sheriff's department, we 
we really have the full force of the sheriff's agency behind us during any kind of an event. Um, uh, we've been very fortunate that we've had a several residents out there protesting very peacefully, um, allowing their First Amendment rights and in, in asking for unity and equality. Um, and, and they've been incredibly considerate and um, peaceful in their protest. So we've, we've been very lucky to have some very considerate folks out there uh, sharing their voice. Um, any questions, we try and put everything up as much as we can on our website and um, on our Facebook and Instagram page. So if there's any breaking news, um, please look to those resources first. And for those of you that aren't signed up, we have an e-alert in any time we do kind of a, a major notice, like we've had two days of curfews early last week, we had, we had made sure that in the news release that e-alert went out to everybody so they knew that there was a, a curfew in place in Lemon Grove um, due to some of the region events that was going on. Um, so that's it and I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Is that e-alert something we sign up for on the website? Yes, okay. yes, yes and I can send you the link to it um, and you there's a menu of things so you can check to only receive city council packets or you can check to receive everything we post on the website um, so it's, it's really up to the user's choice okay perfect thank you Lydia does anyone have any questions for Lydia city manager yes. all right we're praying for you Lydia I know you got a thank big you. job to do thank you thank oh and, and one other thing just um, you can join um, Lydia and the city council and the mayor on uh, city council meetings via zoom you can sit and listen in so that's a great way to kind of stay abreast of what's happening in the city. Absolutely, and um, and it's very convenient. So we're still meeting um, in the council uh, as a council on the first and third Tuesdays of the month at six o'clock. We had to rejigger some of the public comments. So if you would like to make a just a, a public comment in general, um, everything needs to be turned into the city clerk or written a written comment into the city clerk. Um, uh, by 5 p.m. the Monday before the council meeting, so the Monday before Tuesday, um, and then um, and then we will read those um, verbally into the record, so everybody's um, voices are heard. Perfect. Well, thank you, and I know if you have to get off, we totally understand. So, thank you. Appreciate that, Bill. I'm going to turn over to you before your contractors arrive. So, if you want to make your announcement about uh, Interfaith Shelter Network. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Let me see if I can unmute you. You got Is it. Is that working now? Yep, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, Interface Shelter Network is still up and running. Uh, the rotational shelter program is, they're going ahead with all the plans and scheduling. However, everything's on hold until they can actually hear if shelters can be held at the churches. And if so, what with what restrictions? So they're moving forward, but everything's on hold. So can you, for those who don't know what Interfaith Shelter Network is, can you give it like a real quick uh, overview of what, what services they provide? Okay, Interfaith Shelter Network uh, provides uh, several services. Uh, one is the Rotational Shelter Network, which local churches sponsor small homeless shelters for two weeks at a time at their facility. And then after those two weeks, the folks move on to the next church. Uh, and while the, the folks are in the, uh, the program, of course, they're, they're case managed. And the whole idea is to get them, uh, get them income, employment, and permanent housing. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, there's a lot of success in there too. That's uh, and also some other programs they run. Uh, the, this uh, organization called El Nido, uh, it's a transitional uh, apartment complex yeah. uh, and it's for women and their children who are victims of domestic violence. Hmm. Once they get into the program, it's a one year program. They're case managed, they get all sorts of counseling, everything they need. And after one year, I think darn close to 100% of them have moved on to permanent housing and, and permanent income and totally separate from their abuser. That's excellent. And how, how does someone get into that program? Do they 
Okay, most of the guests in that program uh, come out directly out of uh, emergency domestic violence shelters, but they can call our office, uh, 619-702-5399, and you can get the information on that. Awesome. And there's a couple other programs. There's one that uh, if you're on the verge of becoming homeless, uh, we've got people who can step in they're, they'll case manage you, they'll work with you, budgeting wise. Hopefully you can stay where you're at, uh, adjust your budgeting and spending. And at last resort, they will actually uh, give money uh, to pay for rent and things like this so you don't get evicted. That's excellent. That's I have a question for Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I, as I understand it, that when you're up and running, that it's a whole year program, it's not seasonal now? Uh, it yeah. is seasonal, only because there's not enough churches in the county county to go around and make it year-round. Okay, uh, I thought it was year-round. If, if there was enough churches, it would go year-round. Okay, thank you. So if um, this is your first time hearing about Interfaith Shelter Network and your church could possibly host um, 10 to 12 people, right, Bill? 10 to 12? Yes. Um, and basically, they're, they come in in the evening. They, they're out by 6 37 a.m. Um, and there's a few things that you can do, but you can also, like feeding them or sending them with sack lunches. But it, you can also get other churches to help you with the food portion of it if that's too much for your church. But if you have, it's best if you have a place where the men and women can sleep separately, and also showers are really great but not mandatory. Is that correct, Bill? Well, technically they are, but there's lots of ways around it. There's portable showers. Uh, some churches have even uh, hooked up with local gyms to where the people could get over and use their showers and then come back. So, of course, That's gyms awesome. aren't open right now. So Right. <laughs> it's kind of... Just, just my, my last question would be, when it's seasonal, when does it start and end? Okay, the, the county is actually broken down into eight regions. Uh, there's one that actually starts around July 1st, uh, but normally they they start opening up around, run from around September to around uh, April time, time frame. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for all you do. Then, I know you're retired from Interfaith. Oh, you have one more thing? Yes, I sure do. Uh, while we've all been kind of stuck at home, my wife and I have actually been cleaning up our house. That's amazing. <laughs> nice. Find stuff that I never knew existed. Um, <laughs> and I have, uh, I mean, a plethora of religious and church books. Uh, most of them are authored by uh, Dr. Jeremiah. And frankly, after a look at them, I'm not going to ever have time to read every one of them. So if any of your churches have a library, I'm more than uh, happy to donate them. Also, the lady who has the uh, the the Sea Christ bookstore in Lemon Grove. Mm -hmm. If you want them, please let me know. I if I can't use them, I want somebody else to use them. Yeah. Yeah, Clarice. I don't know. Do you have a used book section in your bookstore? Uh, we do not have a used section. We do have a section where we put uh, books on discount. Um, the only thing we, we have taken some books from people who just wanted to get some books in somebody else's hands, but they had to be in really good condition, yeah. um, especially during this time where they're coming from outside of the normal flow of books. Right. Um, and uh, we have to, you know, wipe them down and all of that. So if they're in really good shape, um, you can certainly talk to me about it and we can See, there are some people that we donate books to, and a lot of times I take those and donate them to uh, men's shelters, women's shelters, <clears throat> places like that. Okay. So you know, certainly give me a call, 619-518-5100. 518-5100? Okay, that sounds uh, great. Probably today, later today or maybe tomorrow. About one o'clock, about one o'clock today. About one o'clock? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't usually plan that far in advance, but I'll try to give it a try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's great. Oh, Clarice, stay stay unmuted. We'll go ahead and have you go next since you're you're on camera. Bill, is that everything for you? Uh, yes, it sure is. Okay, great. Thank you so much for all that helpful information. Clarice, you want to give us an update? Oh uh, well, it has been challenging for us as as it has been for most businesses. Um, be, 
uh, in, in especially small businesses, uh, small independently owned businesses who have no uh, other backup. But you know, God is such a good God. And uh, we were able to do curbside with a lot of effort. Uh, so we did get to curbside for a minute. It was limiting because people couldn't come in and look at things and pick things out. Uh, but they could get their communion for their churches. I think uh, some of the communion supplies, we, we really are one of the only uh, suppliers around now, one of the very few suppliers around. But we do get it in, and sometimes it's a month coming. Mm. Uh, a lot of the communion we ordered in March, some of the communion ordered March 24th came uh, Saturday night. Uh, so it takes a while sometimes, but we do want you to know, we want people to know we do carry the communion supplies, the individually packaged communion, and we encourage the churches to uh, use our business, take advantage of our locality and our, our spirituality and mm -hmm. our, our flexibility and our desire to be of service. Uh, we were able to maintain our staff on a limited basis. Uh, we tried to find some work at home. Uh, I did took the time to do some training over the phone and, and do training things. Unfortunately, we did not receive any of the dollars um, that were supposedly part of that package. Oh, um, and I don't know how that, you know, I just decided I just go with God. He's the provider anyhow. Mm -hmm. So we, we did not receive anything like that. But we're up and running and we're at 10 to 5. We have to close from 1 to 2. For cleaning and then open again at two and then two to five and we just want to thank all of the people that have come by and our customers right now is a great time to get your father's day cards mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately we had to send all the mother's day cards back that we had wow. gotten in um, that that's not recoupable for us there's no return on that but we have wonderful father's day cards we have wonderful graduation cards we have uh, God's promises for graduates. So there's a lot of things. Um, we are up and running uh, only two to three people in the store at a time. And you will be asked to have the face covering and to use the sanitizer at the door. I'm proud to say our business has always required sanitizer and has had it at the door from the day we opened. <laughs> uh, but that's my nursing background, I think. So anyway, I just want you to be safe. And I still say the message about one blood that God gave Amen. a year before all of this. Amen. I think God knew this was going to happen. Uh, it is important to work together. The Bible calls us to do that and calls us to love one another. Uh, the key is still love. That's it right. won't happen just because you're supposed to. It won't happen because the government says to do it. It won't happen no matter what you do with the police. It has to do with do I love this person yeah. like Christ? That's and right. I just share that with you for by one blood, God created all the nations. And right. I was so proud. Um, it really touched me when I, I was driving through because I'm locked in too. And I was driving through and saw the young people gathering in La Mesa before everything hit. They were just gathering for the event. And I said, this, this, is, this is getting close. <laughs> we're getting there um, because I was amazed. I was amazed at the, the makeup of the crowd and the numbers of people that were out. But I was truly amazed at these young people because they can access hundreds of people on their Facebook right. and they were able to gather all kinds of friends and they are friends. And I just say that it's tragic what has happened uh, to Mr. Floyd, but that there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. That has been happening for ages. And what we want to do is to use this as an opportunity to try to become the people that we say we are when we call ourselves Christians, mm. to really look at what that is and to be who we say we are. Amen. Mm. Good word. Thank you. Clarice, if you have a flyer or a graphic, um, I would love to encourage everybody here to just share mm. Um, on your social media that her bookstore is open. Um, this is just critical for her. I, I mean, she's one of the very few Christian bookstores, even brick and mortar bookstores in the county, right? So uh, yes, 
we need you to survive and thrive and um, we need to get all of our people um, aware that they can go down there and buy their graduation gifts and cards and um, you know, community you, supplies, it's great. So if you have, we something, have a, a site at CC, it's C Christ, it's C Christ Books, C C H R I S T Books dot com and that is our, our website you can see what we have in the store on that site awesome uh, you can either order there or you can call us if you see something you like and we'll have it ready for you um and then uh we're on facebook as well we encourage you to go to that same thing on facebook like us on facebook um, and if anybody needs anything special let me know we'll send something out to you we do have flyers in the store awesome yes yeah, so you just share her website or her facebook page yeah, I know you have a great smile. Thank you so much. Well, I want to thank all of the people who have supported us. And, and uh, there's, there's, a, there's some of the Lemon Grove churches who've been supportive, who've purchased things to us, and we really appreciate that. We just want all the churches to know we're here for you. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes people look at a store and think, oh, I don't like where it is, but you haven't been in it. Mm -hmm. And right. I think this is important for us to now not just look at, you know, color, anything like that. But here is what I need to do is, is to be who I say I am. Simple as that. I'm a Christian, be a Christian. So we just want to be here for you. We want to be here for the community. You can tell us something you're looking for. If we don't have it, we will get it in for you. And you personalize Bibles too, right? You do this. Stamp. Oh, we specialize in Bibles and we emboss Bibles. We yeah. have uh, three nice. people yeah. who are 15 to 17 years experience each in Bible embossings. And we emboss a lot of Bibles. We only emboss them, and if they bought them somewhere else, uh, wow, it cost a dollar amazing. more, but we would still go ahead and emboss that for you. So. That's great. Thank you so much, Clarice. I'm glad you're yeah. on the call. Excellent. Well, I've missed you guys. <laughs> I know, we've missed you too. Good to see you. Thank okay, you. so I'm going to go back to the beginning. I've got Dean from IPS and your team. So, um, Dean, do you want to make your announcement? Sure. Good morning. Um, as you, I, I think I mentioned in the last meeting, um, I run an opioid education and awareness program, which uh, in the midst of the pandemic and all the social unrest, uh, we certainly have another epidemic going on and teens are a prime target for that. And it's very difficult. There's a, you know, there's a lot of time on their hands right now. There's a lot of, you know, confusion going on in the world and it's very easy to make the wrong decision. So we are assembling uh, toolkits with educational material from the National Institute of Drug Abuse, which has some very age-appropriate material. I'm in various stages of assembling those, but I'm looking for groups to share that with, and they not only give educational materials for teens and tools for parents to talk to their kids, they're also, um, they, they encourage the groups to take an active role in preventing the epidemic within their community, which is a great way to be of service. And it's a great opportunity for them to help educate their peers and help recognize the signs of abuse and uh, misuse in their, in their direct peer groups. And it gives them tools to, to talk to them and, you know, and what to do. And it's obviously, um, you know, between the ages of, I think, 12 and 17, there's a very small window of opportunity to help stop a very bad decision from taking root. And it's, you know, the more information they have, the better. And the more, more opportunities they have to circulate that information, they can have an impact on their direct peer group as well. So I'm going to put my information in the chat window. Again, these are under development. And uh, I should have them I've been promising to them to one person in the room for quite some time now, but I will have uh, some road ready material um, by the end of the week that can be put out there. And I'd really love an opportunity to share this. This is all free information. And we're also putting together some adapted curriculum for uh, teachers. If any of you have, you know, church related schools where they can, uh, you know, get that dialogue going. Um, Opioid misuse is having a huge impact on our country. And as you know, we also have the looming threat of fentanyl out there. And just that one little bit of curiosity, you know, that one little experiment can be a fatal decision. And uh, we don't want that to happen. So the more they know, the better equipped they are to make that decision. And any of you who have kids, I personally do not. But I do know that when I was one, I knew everything. 
and these are these are geared in an age appropriate material to help bypass some of that information and get the material directly to them and help them make better decisions. So uh, I encourage you to get in touch with me. I'll be happy to give them to you. We can also arrange to present them directly to the group when that's allowed, or we can do it through Zoom. So awesome. thank you. That's good work. I know it's. Can I swoop in after that? Yes, you can swoop in, David. <laughs> um, another another aspect of the program that that uh, Dean is focusing on is uh, for older adults. Um, we've also seen a lot of um, um, folks who are are older who maybe have been prescribed an opioid for um, pain relief or whatever, and and um, you know it it starts a chain of events that is not anticipated um, within our older population and so um, if you have groups that um, work with older adults um, that might be an opportunity to come and have a conversation with them about alternatives to um, opioid use and also um, opioid um, locking up your opioid medication because we're also seeing mm. where um, folks are going to grandma's house and unfortunately you know raiding their their opioid supply and and or having um experimenting and sometimes that um leads to tragic consequences as well so um and if you have you know within your your churches not that they'd be work doing now but like sports teams or athletic uh leagues or things like that that um you know there's another area where folks are using opioids for pain relief and then it goes on to something else so mm. um so yeah so it's it's we'd like to be of service to the community as much as possible thank you david thank you dean good it's important work i don't know how many I'd be curious how many people know somebody who's been addicted to opioids it's i know yeah mm. I, I do, it's it's a real it's a real deal and it's not they're not bad people <laughs> they just um they get prescribed it and then their body craves it and and it is a life struggle after that so thank you for the good work you do please put your contact info in the chat room there you go i see it uh, dean thank you for doing that um it becomes a very very uh, personal thing when somebody you know or somebody in your church so it's good to get that information out beforehand like you said to stop people from especially our youth from even experimenting with it. Okay, um, IPS, is that everything? You're good? Okay, awesome. Next, if I have- I actually, um, did, I actually did have one more thing, if I could, I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, I just wanna, in terms of uh, touching base with what's been going on with the protests, and um, there's a lot of folks who wanna be allies uh, to the um, Black African-American community. Um, and part of that starts with looking at yourself um, and the biases and prejudices that you've grown up with and, and evolved. And so one of the things that we at IPS had been doing is um, reading a book called um, oops, White Fragility by um, Bravin D'Angelo. I'll put the name in the chat. Um, it's uh, written by a white person talking to white people about aspects of um how you respond um internally to being faced with your own prejudices and um and racial um uh skews and uh works you through kind of how you when you face those how you react to those kinds of situations um it's not an easy read um but this is not easy work and okay. you know so um i'll put that in the um in the chat box and just as a recommendation is uh as a starting point not the starting point but a starting point i appreciate that david yeah there's a lot of internal work <laughs> that needs to be done for sure um good book recommendation um i meant to make this at the beginning before people started dropping off but um many of you, most of you know uh, miles mcpherson um pastor of the rock church he's um going to be doing um a we pray san diego day um which happens the week after the race amity day which i'm going to have roberta and mike talk about here in just a second 
Um, but I wanted to, um, before people start dropping off, I wanted to find out how many people think they might be interested. Um, let me play a video to show you what it is. And then, um, and then we'll talk about how Lemon Grove can be involved. And I was kind of hoping that George would be on the call because he's mm -hmm. going to be part of the East County movement. But let me go ahead and tell you about Re We Pray San Diego. Okay. How are you doing? I'm Miles McPherson, pastor of the Rock Church. And the fallout from COVID-19 is tearing our country apart. Death, illness, bankruptcy, suicide, and the division of racism is also tearing us apart. That's why we believe the only answer is to pray. So on June 20th, 9 a.m., all over San Diego County, we are going to cry out to God on the street. It's called We Pray San Diego. And if you want information, go to WePraySanDiego.com, sign up, and we're going to cry out to the Father, Father's Day weekend, and watch God do something miraculous right here in San Diego. muted myself. Um, so we pray San Diego. Um, they're hoping we've had a couple pastors calls. Um, I think Nathan's been on one of them where we've Miles has been gathering um, pastors from all over San Diego County. He's hoping that all uh, 18 cities within San Diego County will be able to have a, a site where two cities border each other and stand on e opposite sides of the street six feet apart and just pray using a prayer prompt on their cell phone um, through through the San Diego, uh, the SD Rock app, and it will have music and it'll have prompts and every three minutes you change what you're praying for. And um, so it's a very peaceful uh, kind of a prayer covering over the whole city. Right now, Mark, um, there are only, uh, uh, let me there see. There are six sites. We're gonna, we're gonna bring up the website. You can uh, always go to WePraySanDiego, all one word, dot com. And it has the video and then as information is updated, they put it on that site. Uh, there are six sites right now, uh, divided up in different uh, regions of San Diego County. They have a north site, a west, a south, a downtown, a San Diego site, and an inland. And what we're, we're hoping, if you, if you see that there's a, a region missing, and that's the east region. So I've got a, um, a call into the mayor's office. I'm also I'm waiting to hear back from Bishop Vines of New Seasons in Spring Valley, Spring right? Valley. Spring Valley, and trying to uh, work with them to get a site for, for, for East County. I know Journey Community Church it was gonna work with all peoples. I think their site is the university and college site. Right. Uh, so those two churches are taking care of kind of that, the, the San Diego, the, the La Mesa butting up against the city of San Diego. Um, but it'd be nice to have um, an East County presence. So I'm gonna, be working with other pastors uh, and uh, leaders from different those different cities to see what we can do. Um, and I guess if if we can't get a site or if it doesn't come together, there are always all these other sites that if you uh, want to attend or as we send out the message to the other pastors, their members can attend. It's only it's only for an hour. It's not a long time. It's not something that has to be highly organized it's not like a gathering where there's a center presence on the a stage and you have to have sound it's just lining up on the street six feet apart social distancing and you know, masks recommended and miles is also saying uh, this isn't a protest we're not going to be carrying signs it's it's a prayer movement and we are hoping uh, that a lot of people go and go out for that we know saturdays are busy for a lot of people uh, so the app can be used at home, at work, right. even while you're at another event, uh, it can be used and just go to We Pray San Diego. And once the app is finished, uh, or it may not be an actual app that you download, but a place on the San Diego uh, Rock Church, SD Rock Church, um, uh, it, it'll be a link through there and you can use the, the prayer box. Promise. We'll be sending out that once we once that's finalized and we know for sure how to get the information on your phone because you know some of our elderly people especially want to be a part of it but they're not going to go out on onto a street. It'll probably so, be a warm day, yeah. Um, so it'd be good, you know, they could be praying from home through that time. I 
Um, we would love to see a lemon, maybe a Lemon Grove Spring Valley um, border um, because I don't, I haven't heard of anything in Spring Valley um, that I haven't heard of, I don't know, maybe somebody, is there anybody here? Uh, Joyce is in Spring Valley. Um, so we were hoping that maybe we could get something maybe along Sweetwater. Yeah, but I'm what do you also, think? yeah, either Sweetwater, but the thing with Sweetwater between Broadway and all the way to, oh, I think almost Hamishaw, yeah. Hamishaw Boulevard, the west side doesn't have a sidewalk. Oh. And so that's kind of an issue. It can be more dangerous. Yeah, it can be, can be dangerous. I know the east side of, of Sweetwater has, has, has a sidewalk. Has a sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we, we know that um, our mayor has agreed to the event. We just haven't, we've got to nail down where exactly it's going to be. And we'd love to know if you're on this call and you think you would love to be a part of this, just this hour of prayer, can you just show it, wave at me? Because we need to, okay, Mike, good. Nathan, awesome. Because um, we really need to have at least two or three pastors there to, or, or leaders that can kind of help coordinate it on both sides of the street. So we would need some Spring Valley pastors. Oh, Nathan, you want to say something? Yeah, I, I have to jump off in just a quick second. But um, yeah, our church is our church is behind this, and so uh, we have people that will definitely uh, be there. Um, and uh, so we're right, like on the on the corner of you know we're right on on Carlisle, so Hamishaw is right there on the corner. So we're definitely involved in that as well. Um, and we did. Um, on our church's Facebook page, we had a conversation with some of our, our leaders on, on this topic. And um, so, yeah, we're definitely involved. I'm going to leave my information on the chat as well as if you guys have graduates in your class, uh, what we've offered from the John Maxwell team is uh, there's a free lifetime course that John Maxwell has done. It's a video course for graduates. Uh, so I'll put the link there as well. And if uh, you are interested in doing something, John has recorded a commencement speech for uh, the class of 2020. And so if you're interested in showing that to your seniors um, or any other leadership stuff, please uh, give me a call, contact me. So I'll leave my stuff there. And then um, I will stay in contact with you for the, uh, for the prayer event on the 20th. Perfect. So glad to have you part of this. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks bye for your time. Bye-bye. So that's... Um, that's something that's coming up that we really want to promote because it's it's coming from a place of prayer and including all people so um we will be sending out more information and let us know if you're interested or if you, somebody in your church would be interested in showing up there and praying for an hour um preceding that the sunday before is race amity day and so i'm going to turn it over to mike um and let him go ahead and tell us about that okay Thanks, Ann. And do I have capability of sharing screen? I yes, I, I, um, I unlocked okay. it for all participants, so go ahead. All right, all right. I'm, I'm just putting this up uh, so you can see our, our flyer. This is the, the second annual Race Amity Day uh, event in Lemon Grove, but I want everybody to understand that this goes back 108 years. This would have been the 108th consecutive year that a unity picnic was held in Teaneck, New Jersey uh, for the purpose of bringing together people of various races. Uh, Abdul Baha, the son of uh, the founder of the Baha'i Faith came to America in 1912. He was here for 239 days speaking at churches across the, the country, uh, really trying to bring about the, the idea of elimination of prejudices of all kind uh, to bring about the, the the understanding of the, or in the recognition of the oneness of, of all humanity. So this goes back many, many years. Uh, uh, and the, the concept of the race amity day has, has evolved over the years. It became, there were several race amity conferences and it became a, uh, an actual day in the 1950s. And it's been celebrated at, you know, pretty much throughout our history. Last year, we, we, held, we had two events. One was at the library, um, where the mayor came and spoke and, and shared a proclamation for Race Amity Day. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was a picnic in Berry Street Park. Mm -hmm. So this year we had plans to move it to the promenade as, as we're all trying to do some, some great things around the promenade, but uh, COVID got in the way. So we decided to, to go this route. 
So we're going to have a, uh, a Zoom webinar, which will be live streamed on Facebook. Um, and I want to, you know, just uh, say thank you to Harriel and Joyce for, for their support and, and assistance in helping us get the, in planning the event and getting, getting it off the ground here. But uh, there, it'll be three hours. People can join in at any time. The first hour will is the, the theme is America's Untold Story. The second hour will be Forming Bonds of Friendship. And the third hour will be Moving Forward Together. And in each segment, we will open with prayers. We will have some music. Uh, there will be some videos, uh, presentation, uh, time for discussion. Uh, people will be able to uh, tie in through their chat box, uh, Q&A, and, and uh, you know, really try to, to come up with a, with a, a plan forward. And uh, I think it should be a, a really great event. And... Uh, this will be the second annual for Lemon Grove, and hopefully it will be uh, uh, many more in, in the future. But uh, we, we, yeah, we had had this planned uh, well before the, 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 the current issues that, that we're facing. Uh, uh, George Floyd has, has become a symbol for what's happened in America for, or in, on this continent for over 400 years. And, and I think it's definitely time to change. We need to come together. Uh, unity is, is important, but amity, amity is the word that was selected. That's friendship. Right. We, we need friendship. So, so please, please join us if you can. And our thanks to those who have already agreed to, to participate in the program. Excellent. Thank you. And you put some of that information already in the chat room, right? Yes, I did. And, um, yeah. And then if this flyer, I don't know if you can send this to me as well, and I can attach that and send it out to everybody. Yeah, um, I, I, I sent the flyer to you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, you so Thank much, you. Uh -huh. Mike and Roberta. Appreciate that. Oh, it looks like George joined us. Um, good morning, George. We just showed the video from Pastor Miles and talked about the six locations that are on the website and how we would love to have a Lemon Grove um, oh, or some kind of East County um, do you know, are you involved in an East County site, perhaps? Uh, well, we have an East County site. Uh, I think there's an East County site um, going to be added today, maybe. Oh, but good. over in San Carlos area. Okay. And I think I'm probably at this point going to be involved with um, down there on University Avenue, 61st, because that kind of connects, you know, somewhat close to Lemon Grove. So that's all I know on that at the moment, and we'll find out more the tomorrow. Of course, uh, the uh, uh, Zoom meeting at three o'clock tomorrow. Oh, did you get an email on that? I did not know about that. Okay, good. Zoom. You probably got it this morning. You should. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I haven't, yeah, I haven't been on the email. That's from Courtney. Yeah. Okay. So, um, George, just to let you know we're we're trying to work with the city. Marks called them. Um, waiting to hear back from them. We'd love to have maybe a border of Spring Valley, Lemon Grove, since La Mesa is already doing one with um, San Diego um, and, and border maybe right there on, somewhere oh, along our border. Hamishaw. Hamishaw, Sweetwater. Um, so uh, Nathan, do you know Nathan Gallegos from uh, Scion Christian? I think he's their youth pastor. Um, he, I think so. That name sounds familiar. His whole—he was on the pastor's call last week, and he his whole church is on board for, for getting involved in this. So he just popped off the call right before you got on. So, um, oh. so, so as soon as we can get something nailed down, um, he's definitely committed. And I think um, Mike—I saw Mike's hand. He's committed. Is there somebody else? I can't remember. I'd love to talk to Joyce. She's—I um, think she I'm might be here. doing. Oh, you're here. Are yeah. you? Do you think you and your church would be willing to um, border? Lemon Grove and and do a prayer thing across the street from each other on Saturday uh, the 20th? I can check. And then I want to just offer uh, a suggestion for another location. Oh, sure. um, I think a lot of times people forget about the Veterans Park down here. It's at the very end of Lemon Grove and uh, coming into uh, going into Spring Valley where uh, the high school is. And so it's a little small park, very well kept up. And well, uh, Oh, Go ahead. Mount Miguel? Yeah. yeah. 
So that's a that's a that's a really nice border. Um, I don't know if that's something you all want to consider, but yeah. so it's it's a it's an actual street that people can stand on. You can actually go into that little section right there, well, little he, park right in Pastor there. Miles wants us to stay away from parks and do streets. Well, not not stay away from parks because the well, he doesn't want us the clustering Diego, up. The San Diego is by a oh, is it okay? By a, by like, as long Pacific. as there's two streets where we can we can have uh, Spring Valley people on one side and Lemon Grove people on the other, praying across from each other. That's what he's really looking for. George, mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, well, that uh, that's the ideal, but you know we got to be flexible on whatever our situation is and uh and uh, i hadn't heard about the being separated you know but but i i thought it was to be praying you know to just being praying together you, you know wherever the border is but um uh, my question is have we had any feedback or how would i be able to um connect with i mean i could do it individually but how we could connect with uh our clergy I see we don't have very many on on here, you know, like Will and and Mike over here and in uh, the well, yeah. church and, and different ones that uh, would perhaps be able to, especially this weekend, get it out to their um, congr right. congregation. And but we do have to have a place located if we're going to do it here in Lemon Grove. Right. Yeah, I'm going to get in touch with the pastors specifically and. Hopefully we'll have a, a site before this weekend, but um, hopefully the interest is there, whether we have a site picked or not, because the site, even if it's just a couple of days before, because it's not going to be very far away. Um, they well, it's just a matter of getting the information out. To getting people. the information out. But, I, you know, I, I know there are some people who don't do email, but nowadays we're all so technically connected that it doesn't necessarily have to be an announcement from the pulpit. You know how people are with announcements from the pulpit anyway. They, they they don't, they don't always, time, right? they don't always hear those, but yeah, we, I, I like that idea, um, uh, Joyce, because, um, is there parking there? Yeah. That, that would be there, helpful. There's a park, there will, always is a parking, parking issue. You know? At that Veterans Park, Joyce, is there parking uh, there? there? You would have to park on the street and probably park in the neighborhood. It would be a good idea, you know, to just mark an end. If somebody can just drive down. Yeah. Uh, you can look at it. You know, it's good right idea. up the street from, um, what's the name? The Mormon Church. Yeah, oh, right. right across the street. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's right up the street from the Mormon Church. Yeah, so, I know just where that is. It's a little tiny park right on the way. It's like they Blossom Lane. It's really close to Roberta's house, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's right yeah, down yeah. the street from the church in the high school. Our church in the high school. Okay. Right. I'll, talk with, I'll talk with Nathan too. His church is close to uh, Hamishaw and Skyline, and so you know, there's always the possibility of going down Hamishaw Boulevard. And yeah, George, I think early on Miles was kind of thinking cities partnering yeah. and, and on the border of the city, La Mesa folks on the La Mesa side and- mm. I don't know, that it's not strict yeah, though. It's not strict, obviously. That, that was kind of his vision, but you're right, we could do it a hundred different ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, well, what did you, I'm sorry, I, I missed it, uh, Mark. What was the thing, where was the location you mentioned in the beginning? Uh, there are a couple of ideas that we have. Bishop Vines is very interested in doing something, but he, his, his church in Spring Valley, New Seasons, they might be partnering with another church for another area. But if if he wants to do something representing Spring Valley, I thought maybe either Sweetwater. Um, yeah. But um, Zion Church is also very interested. And if we did something Spring Valley, La Mesa, we could go down Hamishaw or Joyce's uh, idea of yeah. Blossom Lane, which is also a border of uh, that incorporates uh, San Diego, unincorporated San Diego, or Spring Valley, Joyce? Is it Spring Valley? Well, it's actually all in unincorporated. All unincorporated. Oh, yeah, I'll get it right. So Spring Valley and right. uh, Lemon Grove. That is the border yeah. of Lemon Grove. That's where Lemon Grove stops. Right. right. And you said Zion. Is that the church? Uh, is that over there in La Mesa? No, Zion is Lemon Grove across from Lighthouse Baptist. It's a, it's a pretty good size oh. Hispanic. Oh, okay. I know. I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Good. Yes, uh, Roberta, you have a question? Um, hold on, let me unmute you. It won't unmute. Go ahead. You have to unmute yourself. It's not letting me unmute you. I there think you 
safest choice is uh, Veterans Park because the sidewalks, there's sidewalk on both sides, okay. all the way down, um, even down past the Mormon Church a little ways. And on the other side of the street, they've made a little, not exactly a sidewalk, but they cordoned off and put a, a little berm and uh, those. Yeah, they put some barriers up. Some barriers like, so that the type. kids can walk yeah. on that side. Much safer now. So I think at, as far as looking at traffic and people speeding yeah. on, on Sweetwater Road and the other option, Tomasha Road, right. I think the safest bet is the Veterans Park it's in the our Veterans neighborhood. Park. Okay. Yeah. We'll drive over and take a look at it. Um, thank, you. thank you for that. You're in, you're, that's your neighborhood, so you know. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah perfect. Okay, thanks for that suggestion, Joyce. Um, Joyce, you want to speak to your flyer? I'll go ahead and share the screen real quick, and then uh, let's see. We're getting it's ten sixteen. Let's see. How you doing? There you go. So yeah, uh, yes. So um, this is the kickoff for Thrive for the girls, the Still I Rise Girls Project. And the purpose of uh, Still I Rise is to, one, it is to build resiliency. Two, it is to build confidence. Three, it is to build self-awareness. Uh, four, uh, leadership and mentorship is in there as well. And also it's a prevention piece. There's a lot more that goes on with that, but those are the major areas right there. And um, it's a prevention piece for our human trafficking project. Mm. And so what we want to do is build up strong young ladies, uh, the young ladies who are confident, they have great self-esteem. And we um, research shows that with this, these are some of the ways that you can reduce. Now, we can't get completely rid of human trafficking like alcohol. You can't get completely rid of it, but there are certain things that you can do to reduce it. And I just want to say I'm just so thankful and so blessed we have some great partners. Charlene um, Waddell, uh, who is a John Maxwell team member. Um, Estella Del Rios, who is the president of Center for Social Advocacy. Um, Joe Linebacker, dad. Uh, who has some amazing, and all these people come with their own curriculums. So we are combining them together. Mm -hmm. And then NCRC, we are uh, partnering with them as well. So they're the ones that's facilitating this uh, work, particular workshop here. We know the teen years, and especially with teen mm -hmm. girls and mom, that can be a challenging, challenging area for communication. Absolutely. So if we want to help take, you know, lower that stress level. And so uh, they are going to be facilitating this for us. It's, it's virtual, and they do have the capability of putting people in classrooms. So I would just ask, it's free, and everything that Thrive does is free. And I would just ask if you could just help get the word out. I'll probably have another flyer. Will this same flyer come out, but it will have with the registration uh, information on it on next week because they're going to send that over to me. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, we're going to be running some other um, virtual trainers during the summer. That's going to be really good, really exciting. So we're looking to get young ladies into this um, project. We were going to kick it off and are ready to kick it off the Vista La Mesa uh, school, but then COVID happened. So mm -hmm. we want to keep going and we want to engage. The kids have been out of school for quite some time. And I think this would be a great way to get them engaged and get them ready uh, for the school year. And then just get them ready for greater things in life. And it's still I rise because there are a lot of things that they are going to have to conquer and challenge as they grow. And so we have a lot of tools and a lot of uh, resources that can help them be very successful. Joyce, that's awesome. I'm so glad you're putting this together. Do you already have some young ladies that you in mind that you know will be there? <coughs> I have some. Okay. And um, it's opened up, doing it, Lemon Grove is the focus, but I'm opening it up now. We just open it up to whoever wants to participate. So if you have young ladies in your congregation, Roberta, I think, is going to push it out to um, her young folks. And so it's open. And so you guys, please uh, help spread the word. 
Yeah, the, the way, what I know about youth is that they'll go where their friends are going. So if you can get one <laughs> in your group to mm -hmm. say, I want to go, then the others will follow. And so that's a good way to do it. Um, if you, if you like a personal invitation rather than just posting a flyer in somebody's wall um, mm -hmm. and then get them to invite their friends to go. And there's a little less, uh, it's a little less scary when it's just online. So maybe they'll yeah. be more um, you know, interested in and willing to go take in all this great information. So do you know, is it going to, are you going to record it? Um, you're doing it through Zoom, right? I think uh, so NCRC is doing all the technical okay. uh, stuff for us. So I'm pretty sure it would be recorded and it's for moms too, because Good. that's a challenging, that's oh. really challenging. I like the fact that we can put everybody, we can put them in classrooms. So yeah, while awesome. somebody is working with the, with the teens, somebody else can be working with the moms. And I don't know if you're familiar with uh, national conflict resolution, but they have great, great, a great record of success. With, uh, with many things, communication and uh, resolving conflicts and mediation. And they've been around for quite a few years. So, so it's that a is a workshop. A Tuesday? Uh-huh, okay. June 23rd. Okay. Tuesday, June 23rd. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Joyce. Did you have any other announcements for Thrive or... Uh, the Jen only other thing I have, I just want to say thank you. I don't know if Jennifer is still on. I think she dropped um, off. Her granddaughter <laughs> called. <laughs> okay. And Lydia and all the council members, uh, we were up for that extension for the garden and we got extended for five years. It was five zero, five to zero. And so five years. And so we are locked in for five years for the garden. And so Yay. we're really excited about that. Yay. That is such a great addition to our community, that community garden. Those mm -hmm. sunflowers are getting so tall. It's amazing <laughs> when you drive by and take a look at um, yeah, I harvest the, uh, the mayor's bed. Miss Charlotte takes care of it for her. And okay. I don't know if you guys saw the pictures on Facebook, but I shared I, these big zucchinis. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to send them over. I'm just, I took them over to the city and I said, you guys, this is for you guys. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. No, I didn't see. I'll have to go look for those pictures. I'm going to send it. I love it. Five more years. That is such, oh, wow. Thank you um, to Lydia and to the city and the council for voting that in. That's, that's a blessing. Are there, let's see, did I miss anybody? Uh, Mike. I think that was everybody that said they had an announcement. Um, yeah, Monique, we'd love to hear from you. So there are several things that the district attorney's office has been do doing during COVID-19 and it's more resources that might be useful for your people who come forward with issues, right? And I can send you um, all this information, but just so you have an idea of what it is. Uh, during this time of COVID-19, there's been an increase in price gouging. Mm. And so what that is, is when a business increases the prices over 10% of essential goods. There's a long list of essential goods, but that includes things like water, food, toilet paper, cleaning supplies, medications. Um, they can't do that unless their own prices have gone up by 10%. And mm. so we've created a reporting hotline for that because that has been happening pretty extensively across the county. Um, and our goal is not to prosecute. It's a misdemeanor if you do that. Uh, our goal is not to prosecute businesses. It's to get them to stop. And so yes. our move is we send them a uh, kindly phrased letter of like, FYI, you can't do this. So please stop. We know you're doing this. Uh, and hopefully that's enough to get them to stop. Um, if they can show that their own prices have increased by 10%, then that's fine. It's more if they're just trying to take advantage of people. Um, this also applies to hotels and motels for 30 days after a declared state of emergency. Uh, they still can't increase their prices beyond 10%. Um, and so we've created a hotline for that. It's 619-531-3507. And I will send all this to you, but I want you to have it now. Another thing that we created recently is a hate crimes and hate incidents reporting tool. So uh, we learned from the community, specifically the Asian Pacific or Islander community, the API community, that they've experienced a lot of hate incidents and hate crimes associated with COVID-19. And so we created a reporting tool for that. Uh, and the idea is to report both hate crimes and hate incidents. Uh, hate incidents are like uh, hate speech, things that don't rise to the level of a crime, but are 
motivated by race, uh, gender, sexual orientation, things like that. Um, the idea is that hate incidents can sometimes elevate to a hate crime, and we can use hate incidents when prosecuting someone for a hate crime to either help prove identity or confirm that their underlying actions were actually motivated by a hate bias. Um, so instead of a he said, she said, where the defendant denies that it's motivated by that hate bias, sometimes their prior actions, like they've used racial slurs in the past, bolster the victim's version of events because it becomes more of a chain, a pattern of behavior. Um, we are encouraging that people report those things still to law enforcement, but this is an additional tool. Hate incidents are traditionally not reported because they're not a crime, but we are interested in that. However, it's not a hotline that's manned 24 hours a day. So if someone needs emergency assistance, uh, they still should call 911. Yeah. That, that hate process is found on our website. There are three ways they can report. I'll give you the hotline since you're writing things down. It's 619-515-8805. Um, there's also an online tool and an email address, which I'll send to uh, Anne after this. Okay. We've also created a, we know kids are online right now just more than ever before. Um, the amount of child abuse reporting is significantly down, which makes sense because kids are not in school, teachers are mandated to report, and so they're not reporting because they're not seeing the kids. Right. Of note though is that the um, internet crimes against ch children, their reports for child pornography and things like that are way up which is consistent with kids being online more, right? Yeah. And so um, the DA's office through our um, San Diego Trafficking Prevention Collective created a resource for parents. It's a flyer to help them ask questions about kids' internet usage with the eye towards human trafficking. On that flyer, there's also the resources of how to report human trafficking, uh, organizations that provide services in San Diego that might be of use to parents, I'll send that out, but it, it's not the end all be all on human trafficking, but it definitely gives parents some questions to start engaging in that conversation with children. And some of the questions are as basic as, you know, you're on social media, what are your privacy settings on that social media account? And let's start having that kind of conversation. So I'll send you that. Um, domestic violence, the calls for domestic violence have basically been the same as they were before. Um, before COVID-19. However, various nonprofits are reporting that they're seeing an increase in first-time victims. So they have never heard from this person before and they're a first-time victim of domestic violence. Um, we're also hearing that victims, because of the lockdown, and maybe this is changing since things are opening up right now, but victims were concerned that nonprofits were not accepting new clients, uh, were closed, they weren't able to reach out for those types of services. And so our office reached out to the nonprofits of San Diego to confirm who's open and who's not open. Mm -hmm. We created a website um, that includes free local services for domestic violence. It also has an anonymous quiz for someone to take to help them determine their risk of domestic violence. That's with the eye of those first time victims who might not even appreciate exactly what's going on or that they are the victim of domestic violence because it's new. Um, that website is available in English and in Spanish. Um, and I can, it's www.preventdv1.org. That's the English site. Uh, the Spanish site is www.preventdv1 and the letter e.org. Um, we also have a similar website that was created for offenders because if there are first time victims, there are probably first time offenders with the eye of providing information on how to stop the cycle of violence. Hopefully with education, we never see this person again. Uh, that website is www.preventdv and the number two .org. Also available in Spanish, www.preventdv, the number two, the letter e .org. Um, And lastly, our website, the district attorney website, which is www.sdcda.org. On the front page, there is a giant red box. In that giant red box, where there's various hyperlinks to PDFs that are continuously updated. Those PDFs include resources for victims of crimes. Frankly, they're it's more than just for crime. Um, anyone would find this useful, but 
for victims of crimes, there's a website, uh, a PDF with various resources available, including um, how to get help as a victim, but also food resources. Um, there's also a PDF that was also created for victims of domestic violence. From there, you can also access the online tool for reporting hate crimes. And that is right up front, bright red, various hyperlinks um, and continuously updated. Great. Well, that's a lot of information. Look forward to seeing um, your document all forwarded on to everybody, even those that aren't on the call. Um, as George mentioned, a lot of our pastors we have were missing on this call, but they take care of a lot of people. And, and these are the kinds of things that hopefully a pastor would clue in on since um, kids aren't in school and, and there tends, when you're cooped up together, it tends to be um, flashpoints for, for domestic violence. So. And there's obviously a lot of stressors, people losing their yes. job, kids in school, a lot of flux. Uh, and those are unfortunate situations that all lead towards things like domestic violence, right? For some of us, being at home is the yeah. safest place to be. And for other people, that is the most dangerous place that they can be. So and true. they're even more isolated than they were before. Um, a lot of victims, prior victims of domestic violence, had established safety plans that they had worked with their caseworkers. Um, things they're still with their abuser but things to do in case things happen the problem with everything being on lockdown is sometimes those avenues those safety plans no longer are available because they can't go to those places or or it's more challenging uh, right. they're not normally leaving their home and so it's not so natural to go to that safety plan location because now it would be a whole to do to leave during COVID yeah. um, so hopefully these resources are helpful to you if someone comes to you with these issues yes. um, direct them or at least become familiar with it yourself to aid with that. Thank so thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right. Are there any last minute announcements as we are at 1030? Time to close out. Um, George, I maybe we could stay on for just a minute and talk about how to get get all the other pastors involved in this. Um, we pray San Diego um, since they're not on the call. Okay. Um, anybody just looking for hands? If there's anybody waving with announcements? Nope. Okay. Um, hey, George, would you mind closing us out in prayer and pray for um, just our race relations within our cities and also, you know, the Race Amity Day is on Sunday and then um, we pray San Diego the following Sunday, just that we might be all um, on Saturday, I'm sorry, and that we might be all um, involved in the peacemaking process. Amen. Thank you, George. Well, Father, we first of all, we say thank you for the Prince of Peace. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross and the fullness of what you accomplished on our behalf there in the cross, in the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Son of God and the Son of Man, the Son of David. We thank you today that, Lord, heaven looks down and sees what's going on, and you've made it clear that your will is that your kingdom come, your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And, Lord, we, we understand that to mean the government of God would come and rule in our hearts, rule in our lives, that the very spirit of the Lord, we thank you that uh, we just celebrated Pentecost Sunday, and we thank you that, Lord, you didn't just give us a word and then say, go get it done, but Lord, you sent your Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us the kind of wisdom and the kind of understanding that we need to have to be able to deal with our own heart issues so that we might be able to come alongside others and help them as they deal with their heart issues. And Lord, uh, as the people of God, Lord, we see this as a, a horrible thing that's happened and needs to be dealt with, but also an opportunity to step into uh, the role that you called your church to, that you have uh, called us for and anointed us for. And we pray that we would take advantage of this uh, time that we've been separated from 
the typical normal, what we've known as normal church gatherings, and that we become the church in the community, in the city and where we live, the sphere of influence that we have. And so we pray for that increase. We pray for that anointing, that presence. I thank you today, without going too long here, I just want to say thank you for what's already been going on in prayer. And uh, even last weekend, as we gathered with the La Mesa Police Department and, and worshiped <laughs> on the front porch there and, and cried out to you for these different things. And Lord, what was predicted didn't happen this weekend. And, and Lord, I'm just going to give you the glory and the, and the, and the praise for it. And, and we thank you that you announced in the coming of Jesus that your will was peace on earth and goodwill towards men. We thank you that you have extended your arm of peace to us. The issue is our taking it and our receiving it on your terms rather than our terms. And so we pray that you'll help our hearts, help our lives, help us to come into that place where we have a, 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 a greater capacity to hear from heaven and that, uh, that we would be your instruments wherever we are, wherever we're connected, to communicate uh, your love, your care, your, your kindness. And then lastly, Father, Lord, we thank you that the Apostle Paul carried the mystery. He unfolds it throughout the New Testament, the one new man. That, Lord, you saw the need. You saw that it's an impossible situation in the human condition for humanity to solve, that it could never happen. But, Lord, you stepped in. You became one of us. And, and Lord, you, by your spirit now in the resurrection, have called men, women, young and old, every form of human being into a relationship with you and that we're in it together. We thank you, Lord, that by your spirit through the shed blood of Jesus, we're made sons and daughters of the living God. Those that don't know that, we pray that they'll come to know it. Those that know it, that are in the midst of the battle, Lord, help them to sort it out. And as the scripture says, rightly divide the word of truth so that we can discern our own hearts and that we can help others be set free. Thank you for Anne. Thank you for Mark. Thank you for what they do here in Lemon Grove and for our time together. And uh, Lord, we come with many ideas, but really what we need is the revelation of heaven. <laughs> and so we pray for that to happen in this tumultuous time, but also in this time of tremendous opportunity to make shifts and to make changes and we thank you for it father in jesus name amen amen <clears throat> amen thank you george appreciate that thank you everybody have a great week <clears throat> um, i imagine our next meeting will be on zoom um we'll just see if anything july we would 8th. have a um oh yeah july 8th we would have a meeting without food probably will be our 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 easing into back to the clergy breakfast so um so we'll get that information out to you on email so just stay stay posted and stay healthy stay well um we love you all and thank you for all you do for the city of lemon grove bye everybody george go ahead and stay on because um, we want to talk about okay. we pray san diego